Hi there. In this video, we'll learn about the market structure and its relevance with the business organization. We all know that a business organization has to function in a market and the market structure that it functions in determines that how it will be able to maximize its profits. Before we go ahead, I suggest that you subscribe to this channel if you haven't and you may also click the bell icon so that you get the updated material. So let's come to the material of this uh, topic. Primarily, let's just define the market. It's basically a kind of place or in this a digital era it can be a platform, a digital platform which is not necessarily existing in physical terms. For instance, we all know about Amazon that how we are able to buy things via Amazon. So it's not a place but it's a platform that exists virtually, not physically. Physically speaking, New York Stock Exchange than any other market where there is a place where people come and go. That's an example of a place oriented market. Now the transactions take place, no matter it is a platform or a place. And there are buyers in it and there are sellers in it. So when such sort of situation exists, we know that we are talking about a market. Now market structure can be defined on the basis of a few things, few features that we will see here. Economic atmosphere in which there are sellers and there are buyers and they behave and they operate uh, in, in a certain way and they consider the competition and the organization. So it is an atmosphere where the buyers and sellers, they are there. So market is there, but what sort of structure is there? It gets determined by various factors. Let us see that which factors or criteria determine the market structure. They are listed here. Uh, let's start with the first one, which is about the type of the product. The product can be either homogeneous or identical for all the producers. All of the producers, they might produce identical or homogeneous products. Identical might be very difficult because um, there can be a slight difference. So homogeneous is something that uh, can befit the reality easily. And once if this situation is there, it is likely that the price across all the firms will be the same or single. The other possibility is that the firms, they are producing differentiated goods. They're not producing similar or homogeneous or identical goods. Once they do so, the prices they are likely to be different. We see such situation in today's world of uh, electronic appliances like computers, refrigerators. They are producing differentiated goods that are totally different, but they are different differentiated on the basis of certain features. And their prices are also not the same. Their prices, they also differ. Another criteria for defining the market structure is the scope of supply and demand. When it comes to the firms that are producing, they can be uh, large, they can vary in terms of their influence and uh, selling of the products, how they sell their products. Their supply patterns can differ. They can be small firms, they can be large firms, they can be virtual firms, they can be physical firms. So the supply scope can vary. And when it comes to the uh, demand side, the consumers, they are there and they can be uh, different in terms of their various features, demographics, as well as how uh, wide the circle of this consumer is, what is the scope of it. So these features basically help define us this criteria that in turn define the market structure, that how supply and demand of a certain product is different in various market structures. Another feature that can help us to understand the market structure is the mobility of the input in the product, into the product. How flexible the firm is in entering uh, or exiting the business market or its own industry. The entry or exit of the firm is also one question that we need to answer. If a businessman is trying to enter in a market by doing his enterprise, if it is easy, then we can say that the entry is flexible. There are no legal bindings, uh, the inputs that he has to use in the production process. If they are easily available, then definitely it's not very difficult to enter into the market. And if some existing market wants to exit the, uh, ex uh, existing firm wants to exit the uh, market, then if it is easy, then it is also a possibility. The other possibility definitely would be that it is difficult to exit the market. Maybe the investment that the firm has done is a capital investment and it is very difficult to um, liquidate it 
or sell it and then uh, to come out of it there might be some legal bindings as well. So you see all of these possibilities are there in the process of entering or exiting the market. So that also defines the type of the market structure we are operating in. Also the information status is to be considered that how well informed are these economic agents that is the producers and the consumers. What is the level of disparity of information that they have? For example, if we talk about the production cost, we talk about the input supplies, the competition in the market, what is the price of the product, what are the rules and regulations, and what are other vital pieces of information about the market. These uh, oscillates, they are not uh, fully um, comprehended by the various economic agents and the level of information can be asymmetric. That is, producers can have more information about the product uh, cost and input supplies. And this disparity is not just between producer and consumer. It can also be among the producers because there are a number of producers. They can also be having uh, various levels of information about these key pieces of information. So this uh, symmetry or asymmetry or the status of information also helps us to understand that what kind of market structure we are operating in. So operating uh, in uh, the market uh, can happen in either of these four ways and that is based upon these criteria that we have just understood. It can be either perfect competition that a firm is operating in, it can be a monopolistic competition, it can be an oligopoly, it can be a monopoly. Depending upon the number of buyers and sellers, we can get a very clear idea of all the market structures that we are visualizing here. There are definitely um, stakes of other pieces of information like mobility of the imports, the uh, level of information, the scope of supply and demand and what kind of products are being sold. So all of these factors determine that which one of these market uh, structures are we operating in. In the upcoming videos, we'll be understanding these uh, market structures one by one in depth. So this was about the introduction of this. I hope you have learned from it. And if you have, then you may like it. Thank you for watching.